yeah, it's definitely something that uh, is known, but probably po more poorly understood than you think. Right. I wonder if there's lichen in the ocean. Um, not likely. Not likely. <laughs> the lichens are um, s symbiotic yeah, forms of fungi and um, and uh, algae. Algae, yeah. So that's they need to be photosynthesized. But yes, I mean, yeah. so but isn't that or isn't there algae and fungi in the ocean? Um. Well. Not down here, shallower. Okay, uh, go ahead. I don't think there are any examples of that shallower. Um, there are examples of symbiotic relationships like that. For example, like corals are sim uh, symbiotic associations between uh, an algae uh, called a dinoflagellate and uh, you know, the coral uh, host. Um, so there is photosynthesis going on within the coral tissues that provides food for the coral and exchange the um, the algae gets a place to, to live, basically, and uh, nutrients. But no, I don't I don't know of any large marine fungi that kind of form, you know, large structures. I'm not sure what these pock marks are. Maybe maybe they could be collapsed burrows or something like that. But they're definitely filling with a lot of um, what looks like organic, you know, fluffy marine snow. All right. Well, we at least we waited. We got to one waypoint. That was kind of uh, <laughs> check that box. <laughs> okay, we're gonna swap in the video chair. I do.
All right, Team Blue Water's getting settled in the control van here. Our watch is going to last for four hours on this 20... Let's see, what, what hour are we in this 24-hour dive? I didn't do the math. I usually do it beforehand. Oh, we started the dive at 7, 7 p.m. 4. It's now 4 a.m. 9. We're an hour 9 of our 4 at 24 hour dive. We're good at math at 4 in the morning. Uh, I usually do it before I turn on the mic, but my brain just didn't catch up with my body. Uh, we are exploring the southern flank of unnamed seamount B. Unnamed and unexplored. We've never seen the seamount before. Uh, we started at a depth of approximately 3,731 meters, and we are headed up the slope to approximately 1,979 meters. Too low. Gotta go. We've got a nice surprise for the Telestrator, Aaron, if we, uh, Oh, I'm excited. Bring on the cute. All right, good morning. Um, let's do some introductions. This is your watch lead, Megan Putz from the University of Hawaii. The rest of us in the back row are... I'm Abrian Currington. I am a science communication fellow, and on land I'm a professional illustrator and cartographer. Corley Rodriguez, I'm Data. In our front row, we have our ROV team. Trevor Herc. Antonella Argus. Aaron Navigator Mapper. Aaron Video. Awesome. So we are currently diving on this sort of sediment field with small pebbles. And there are quite a few little animals hanging about. You might see them darting around in your screen. Really small crustaceans. So this is, uh, it looks barren, but there is a lot of life here. So I'm spotting... Nothing large current, uh, currently in our view, but we will likely see some sea stars, sea pens, sea cucumbers, maybe a few fun fishes like Typhlonus nasus, which we saw on our last dive. Um, there might be some Bathysaurus mollus and some Bathytiflops, which are lizard fishes that are ambush hunters. I'm hoping to see one of my favorite fun fishes, Ipnops. 
it lays on the ground. It has one of those pseudo eyes. It doesn't have true eyes. It has like this sort of plate on the top of its head that glows. So keep your eyes out for a little glowy patch. Hey, that Science Row, how many rocks nuts. have we taken? We have taken two rocks and we are close to getting to our next rock sampling location. Are they big rocks? I don't know. Um, no, no, probably small. Yeah, they're hmm. both in the small boxes. Okay. Yeah. Why? Do you want a big rock? Well, it feels very heavy. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Oh, they put a lot of rocks in the forward yeah, box um, that had animals on them. So that might be it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It looks like they also uh, okay. scooped some yeah, more. Let's, let's ditch a plate. I'm going to keep stirring up sediment here. We'll have to wait for comms. And just as a heads up, we will be taking our next rock sample at 3030. 30 what? 3030. 3030, Roger. Oh, I hear, turn your arm off. Yeah, you gotta wait for all this stuff here. Okay, you're good now. Yeah. Let's do one of the left side ones. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Uh, that's much better. Right now in view, I've seen, I'm seeing this squealy trail of possibly a sea cucumber. Looks to be a little bit old, but if you're noticing squealy lines in the sand, that is one of the animals that be, might have been making those little squiggle trails. They also leave behind trails uh, that are a little more three-dimensional above the sand, so those can be fun to spot as well. Yeah. Question from the chat, do the weights break down? Yeah, they're uh, steel and hemp, so they're, they will eventually break down just fine. Look at these interesting little pits. Those are probably made by an animal. You want to zoom in on them? Um, they're not particularly 
Uh, I think we can see them better from this direction. Okay. Yeah, if we zoom in, it'll just look like a, a bunch of detritus. Detritus. Yeah. You can see that the detritus sort of collects in the little pits. But they're kind of evenly spaced out. This one here. Looks like they continue on. Should we follow the trail? Follow the snail trail to the prize? Yeah. I love a Have good you mystery. used the ground circle yet on the Telestrator? Oh. I don't think I've tried it's the bottom weird. region one. Yeah. There's the bottom region, which is the square, but there's also a circle one as well. Oh, bottom mark. Oh. Yeah, look at that. Putting a mystery hole like a, what was it, Looney Tunes? <laughs> Just like make a hole. Oh, it makes it smaller as you go further. Huh? I just saw the circles of these little detritus pits, and it made me think of them. It's almost the exact same shape. You might also see a really interesting critter. Uh, called a xenophyophore. It's actually a protist, a single cellular organism that makes a test out of this sort of um, phytodetritus material that's collecting in these holes. And their tests can be lots of different shapes. They're, they're sort of like wavy or crenulated, maybe fan-shaped, round. Um, and they lived inside this test. They're one of the well, the largest, I believe, known single-celled organism. But they are multinucleate, which means that they have a lot of nucleuses within their cell. So these depressions, what could possibly be uh, living in there or or have made them? Um, maybe uh, possibly a sea star. Sometimes they like to bury themselves. Oh. Yeah, so sometimes when you, you might spot a sea star, but all you see is like a little top of them and you don't see their legs. Um, what else might make it? Little fish, maybe? I've seen some cuskeels, they sort of settle down in these little, like, depressions. So they could be made by fish. You zoom in there. You want to zoom on that? You say? Yeah. Oh, on okay. the little uh, urchin thing. Yeah, it looks like a little urchin thing. Okay, go ahead, zoom, please. So this is a spitodiadema, a, a type of urchin. Sorry. It has these really long spines that help it move across the sediment here. But we usually see them on the rocks on seamounts. So it's interesting that this one's hanging out on the sediment patch. Maybe we're getting close to the rocky area.
This looks like a fresher trail. Kind of goes like this. <laughs> nice drawing. Thanks. I think I copied it perfectly. I think so, yeah. Got a fish question for you, Megan. All right. Uh, at these depths, are the fish egg layers or live bearers? Um, I think it depends on the fish. Some are, some aren't. Really? Yeah. Do uh, octopus ever leave their egg sacs down this low? Yes. So the Dumbo octopus, which I believe, uh, not on our watch, but on a different watch, was spotted on yesterday's dive near the very end. They will lay their eggs on corals. Nice. And do they do the same behavior as the shallower octopus where um, like they have to stay with it forever and like fan them and all that stuff? No, they seem to just lay them and uh, let nature take its course and uh, you know peace out. Mm -hmm. So they don't usually stay with their eggs, but uh, they do live longer lives. So we believe that they, they can uh, have multiple broods, unlike the shallow octopuses, which only reproduce one time. Yeah, this method seems far less labor intensive. Mm -hmm. We should have a conference and compare methods. Yeah. <laughs> I always feel sad for, for those octopuses. Yeah. Oh, is there a thing up there? There are things everywhere. I know, there's things everywhere, but... <laughs> I don't know, that one looks like a, a crab with a zoanthid on its back. Where? Right here. Let's find out. Looks like a glove with little pom-poms on the ends of the fingers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, zoom in on the crab thing, please. So this is actually a hermit crab. And instead of having a shell, <laughs> oh, it's, it's taken off. It's like, nope, I'm out of here. <laughs> it's got a jet pack. It's so fast. Dr. Octopus. So what did it grab to use as its shell? So this is actually a... A zoanthid. So we were seeing these on the corals, but yeah. this zoanthid um, we always see on this crab. Did it choose the zoanthid, or did the zoanthid choose it? That's my question. That is a good question, and I don't have the answer. All right, come on, please. And it's always this type of crab. This it's type this of type of crab. It always has this type of zoanthid. Very weird. So these are the parapagurids. Um, some of them have anemones on their backs, and some of them have this, like, glove zoanthid. It would be nice to collect one of them, but I'm pretty sure they would swim away. Sounds like a fantastic challenge. All right. The next one we see, you can try to collect it. Okay. It might involve some squishing. No. Yeah. Well, uh, you squish the coral, but try not to smash the crap. We don't want crab soup. Crab soup. I want crab soup. I don't think it, Herc wants crab soup. No. Probably not. Hey there, uh, Navigations Aaron, do you have a minute? What was that? Sorry. I was just asking if you had a minute to tell us where we are since it's so very flat. and We were supposed to be going up a ridge, so I don't know. Oh, we're, what yeah, we're, we're going uphill, <laughs> just um, at a really slow pace. I'll zoom out on high pack and we can take a look. We're not on a ridge yet.
All right, big picture. We're headed towards a ridge. That's the kind of the spine of this ridge. Not as sharply defined as some we've been on, but still quite a ridge. Um, headed to the top. This here, if you're looking at high pack, this horizontal bit is partially real, partially data artifact. So it won't be that as steep as it looks, I don't think. Um, but right now we're down here. And so zooming back in, it's kind of a, a little bit of a plateau or it should steepen up a little bit as we finally head up towards waypoint five and get on the, the, the ridge itself. Uh, and those contours are 10 meters. Nice, okay. This question in the chat, what is something that you never get tired of seeing on the ocean floor? Well, there's the Chanakops crew. Chanakops fan club. Yeah, the Chanakops never get boring. They're so cute and pink. Actually, okay, pretty Aaron, much can you zoom in on my of favorite animal? Angler fishes. What could that be? Oh, uh, yeah, this is another sea pig. Penny Agony. <laughs> I never get tired of that name. Sea pig. They have their little little feet. So they've got these sort of walking feet on the back end. And near the mouth, they have these sort of mouth grabby feet. Mouth grabby feet. Yeah, so they, they like grab the sediment and they stick it in their mouths. <laughs> it kind of looks like Peppa the pig. I understand why they're called that now. Yeah, they look kind of pig-like, don't they? I feel like these are the least pig-like sea pigs that I've seen. Like, usually they, like, look like little pink, like they have, like, I don't know, six. Yeah, those are the ones that are off the California coast. We don't oh. have as many here that look like that, but um, there are a few that have more of that picky look, but they tend to be white. Oh, I see. But they are all in the same family of sea cucumbers, the that Elpidiidae. Because the ones that I saw were off the, uh, well, they're off the Washington coast, but yeah, yeah, same thing. Yeah, west coast. Yep. I guess it was, uh, yeah, it was the whole coast because we're in California as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Land tracks. Yeah, the animals in the ocean don't really believe in uh, the arbitrary boundaries that humans have put in place. What? I know, right? That's they're like, so, oh, there's only like little force fields in between each area. Right. You know, I used to believe that about the states. Aww. Like each state, like it was like you... color coded, so like you know, this right. is a little and bit when you, red. When yeah. you would go across the state lines, and there's a little sign. The sign was what you let you go through these boundaries. Nice. I yeah. love it. I don't know what I was thinking. Well, time zones also feel like they should be a little more like. There, should there be is a, a boundary. Like... Your cell phone knows it's there. Right. It automatically changes. And, like as much as annoyed as I am by like arbitrary human human things, um, time zones are real. It's just that like the lines that we draw for them are a little don't make a lot of yeah, sense. Yeah, and they're like, oh well, you know, Indiana still wants to be in the other time zone, so we'll just draw a line around it. There's a line through Tennessee, so it's like, why? And I mean, it's it is more helpful though because technically, like every time you move east or west, the time is slightly different. Mm -hmm. But that would be impossible to track. So it's okay to chunk it up a little bit. But I will not start ranting about daylight savings at saving time though, because that's a rant. That's a rant and a half. Yeah, Hawaii doesn't do it. I, so. Yeah, <laughs> and nor should it. I don't even care about like getting up earlier or later. It's just really annoying that it like messes with the uh, like the celestial cycle and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, a rock! Found a, found a rock. Coralie, it's your time to shine. It's my what? Your time, time to, to shine. shine. We found yeah. a rock. I think it's the rock's time to shine. Looks like it has some. Botryoidal <laughs> texture. Oh my gosh, proud mom moment yesterday when 
Megan was describing this rock and scratched it with her finger and was like, on the most hardness scale, it's between a two and a three. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I learned all about the, the scaling from our other dive. <laughs> yeah. I described it, I was like, oh, well, I used my fingernail. Yeah, that's like the, it's like the hardness test. And if you want to figure out harder minerals, you just get minerals that you know are hard, like the hardness of them, and you, you scratch them against other rocks. Seems like a very primitive way to go about it, but also extremely effective. Yeah. <laughs> What is the function of the laser? So the lasers are uh, basically a little ruler for us. They are always 10 centimeters apart because they're perfectly parallel. So anything that we shine them on, we know it's either smaller or larger than 10 centimeters. Starting to get some speed now, yeah. Here we go. Oh man, the little nodules are going by so fast. So if if this was oh, oh, look at oh. Our, so fast, oh, we missed so the fast. Sorry, I fell behind because I was distracted, and then now I'm playing catch up. So we go so slow for like the whole first half hour, and then I'm like, oh, now we're all of a sudden fast. If if this was you know on land, what is the like how how fast is this compared to like normal walking speed? Uh half a knot is one k an hour, and walking speed is. Two to three. Fish. Snaps him with the fish. Eh. Oh, too fast. It's a casquille. What kind of casquille? May you ask? A very cusky looking one. Look at him stirring up all that sediment and not me. Oh, okay. Nope. <laughs> False. Okay, I'm back out in front. We can do zooms on stuff. Sorry about falling behind there. It's like we put on our turbo jackets. Going so fast. Ge geologically fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's another one of those sea pigs. Oh, yeah. What's afloat? Oh, it's a red shrimp. Shrimp. So many Another red sea shrimps. pig. Oh yeah, there's quite a few of these, and they all look the same. So <laughs> that's like a convention. We've been here before. Maybe we're just going in circles. Yeah. <laughs> Very possibly. But they're you know nicely socially distanced. Mm -hmm. pigs. Quite socially distanced. I feel like the deep sea is socially distant. For the most part, we did see those uh, two sponges hanging out together. Yeah, which was strange because normally they're not that close. But when you get to those really good spots, I think they, the animals give up on the social distancing. <laughs> you know, as you get higher up on sea mounts, but you know, down here on these like sandy patches, things tend to be quite socially distanced uh, near the top. That's where the, the really party goers uh, end up hanging out, you know. Party sponges. Party sponges. Uh, the, that party of uh, sea pens. Yeah. That was pretty cool. The writer's convention. Yeah. It's fine. If you want, but it's it's six of one half dozen the other. Otherwise, it'd be negative 0.6 and positive 0.5 on the tether. So, it's equivalent. <laughs> Rather.
Roger. I like this, like, almost straight line of rocks. Nice straight line, yeah. We've seen a couple of them, too. I don't really know what that's all about. If only we had a geologist with us. If only. Yeah, if only. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's the boundary. A social that's distancing the boundary, boundary yeah. Oh no, we've got a story problem in the chat. Not really, but this is actually a good point. It says if your field of view is around 200 centimeters wide and you're moving at uh, one knot per hour, how long would it take to survey the entire world's oceans? Puts the scale of the world's oceans in perspective. Yeah, it does. That's a great question. Yeah, I'm not doing that math. a great exercise for viewers at home. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Not doing that math, but that is, that is a really good perspective. There's a shrimp floating by. Shrimp shadow, too. Shrimp up. shadow. There's the shrimp. Do, 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 there it is. There's such a great color on the uh, background of the sea. They are. Sea and sea floor. Hey, Coralie. Yes. What are you hoping to learn from your uh, rock samples? Yeah, I'm hoping to learn a lot. Thanks for asking. <laughs> that said what, not how much. Oh. Not a quantity, a quality. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping to learn a great quality of about stuff. Thanks <laughs> for asking. Come on. <laughs> you have to explain it at least <laughs> once per day, or once per day, uh, watch. Yeah, so right now what I'm trying to do is collect water and rock pairs um, gram manganese crusts are formed from the ambient seawater, and so I, we think, or at least I think, that the seawater composition is going to have an effect on the crust composition. Um, I'm hoping specifically to look at cobalt, but maybe I'll open it up and look at more, um, depending on how cobalt goes and stuff, but yeah. Hey, what was inside the peanut butter rocks? Uh, it looks like just mud. Oh, so yeah, so Dr. Ballard came in with a, a, one of the sliced nodules, and the one he showed me, like, just had a little bit of mud in the inside? The, oh, the ones uh, uh, Bob sliced yesterday? Yeah. Those are actually volcanic rocks. Oh, okay. Yeah, so those are, like, altered volcanic rocks, but then the stuff that was breaking really easily, those, like, peanut butter rocks we saw, that was more like mud. Okay, but I know, like the little, the little round nodules. They were not nodules; they were volcanic rocks. Are we talking about the same thing? Yeah, the little ones. Okay. Not nodules. Interesting. So were all of these things we were calling nodules volcanic rocks, or? What? Um. Not what sure. You, so, like, technic. So technically, nodules only form on like the seafloor and they form around a particle, so I guess it would make more sense to call the mud rock like a nodule in that sense, because they form on like quote unquote softer rocks. Mm. Um, and then crusts are like defined as to be formed on harder substrates, so volcanic rocks. So even though they looked like nodules, those little things are probably like, if you're gonna pigeonhole them into something, you would pigeonhole them into being crusts. And then the big like crusts that we saw, you would probably be you could call those nodules. Oh, but whoops. since it's formed on the sides of sea mounts, I think people would just call all of it crust. Very cool. Yeah, he was walking around showing everybody. I was amazed that the rock saw was in use and very irritated that I didn't get to see it being used. Oh yeah. It was kind of funny. Um, Bob kept, Bob and Adam and I were sitting down and Bob kept talking about how he wanted to see what was on the inside of those. And of course everyone thought, you know, the rock saw wasn't working. And uh, I was like, I can try it if you want. Do you want me to like help you with it? And he was like, sure. And then Is I was like, do you want to do it now? And he was like, sure. And I like ran down and he just did it all himself. I don't know why he, <laughs> he needed my help. <laughs> there was a second fish too. This uh, little blindy boy. 
This looks like a Bazazetus, or it could possibly be an Aramichthys. Where's uh, the second fish? It was, yeah, it, I saw the sh a shadow of a b second bigger fish as we zoomed in on this one. There's always a bigger fish. Love the lines on the uh, sediment Might here. Might have passed us by already. Oh. Uh, yeah, in the chat they're talking about the volcanic rocks. Yeah, most of the stuff down here that we've seen, the rocks anyway, they have the crust on them, correct? Most, not most of the stuff we've seen has crust on it? The, the rocks that we've seen. Yes. Yeah. That is correct. They're trying to find a, a raw uh, basalt yesterday, and it was a little tricky. Yeah, so even the basalts that we collected those really kind of angular rocks um we're still they there's crust on top of it as well really love these sediment lines right? what are these sediment lines yeah. i said i love these um, yeah how they're like streak streak like they're yeah they're really um uniform and straight yeah it's like they're uh, uh you know somebody's raking the the, man, uh, the rock garden Yep. Totally yeah. looks like a rock garden. <laughs> or like a fingerprint zoomed in. Like if you look in the Argus oh, view. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is cool. I always lean over to see the Argus view even though I have both screens. Right. Well, it's a little easier to see on the big one. Yeah, the big screen. A lot more comfortable. We have a uh, half of a, re a real question and a not real question. Do any of the fish fish chase the lasers, or is that just catfish? But the question, the real question, is: Do oh. any of the fish chase the lasers? No. Uh, they they most fish avoid the ROV because uh, of light, and uh, it makes a lot of noise. Apparently, I've definitely seen fish chase the lasers. Yeah. Could not tell you what species, but Fun. yeah, absolutely. Oh. That's awesome. Not the catfish though. Catfish are uh, freshwater. Yeah. So we wouldn't see them. That half was a joke. But, uh, yeah, that's interesting. My cats would be totally into the lasers, though. <laughs> Do you have the laser dots on your uh, annotated footage? Yeah. And you don't, so are the cats just like, oh my gosh. My gosh oh, what that? when I was working from home, it took a long time, but one day my cat realized there were fish on my screen. Oh no! It was really cute, very distracting. Um, <laughs> but she was like following it and like trying to like catch them. Oh! Did she catch any? No. Yeah. <laughs> she got overwhelmed when there was like too many fish. Take her to an aquarium. And then I had to kick her out because I was like, I got to get my work done. You kicked out your cat? Yeah, well, I, I kicked her off the desk. It's heartless. Yeah. It's I, heartless. I was like, I'm sorry, you can't be up here. You're going to knock my computer screen over. What's this little thing? Uh, Let me say that better with the zoom versus my words. Yeah. You're failing me. I don't see a thing. It could be a thing, though. I think it's... An anemone, isn't it? Could be, yeah. It's on a rock. You can zoom when you think, but oh. I'm still working my way down. I see it now. You are right, Aaron. It is an anemone on a rock. This is collected on the last cruise. Plus one oh, ID yeah, that's point right. for Aaron. It's like okay. ridiculously long. Thank you. Coming wide. Body anemone that we had never seen before. 
Thirty thirty. We're past it. Um. Let's do a quick snatch and grab on this one off to the right here. Get ready for it. Oh yeah, there's some nice little crusty bits. They're just moving so fast. Yeah, we got to do this in a hurry. So. We'll, uh. If it's too difficult, we can also wait a little bit. Well, do you want these ones or do you want later? We could wait for later. Okay. These ones look really sedimented. Yeah, this is not the greatest area for the rocks you're looking for. Yeah. These are not the we rocks. We may have you're to wait till we for. get to the ridge. Which is fine. Ah, uh, you can leave that on. Yeah, the depths that, that we've designated are sort of arbitrary. Like these ones aren't good rocks. I like that big one, but I don't think we can pick it up. <laughs> Roger. Okay, well, we are seeing some rocks here, so let's just keep our eyes open. I'll try and rip to the end of the tether so we have a bit more time. Yeah, these are just so flat. And, yeah, to clarify on the rock, so, yeah, it was a volcanic rock with crust Ooh, as opposed what about to this a right, that one looks not volcanic good. rock with crust. The one on the right of these two? Uh, the Yeah, the right. You could do the right one. Yeah, you bet. Sure. It might be stuck. We could try the one above the lasers, too. Gonna Argus a bit. Oh, it's loose. Nice. Yay. Also, not small. That's that's a large rock. You okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, okay. starboard. Box Echo is open. Roger that. If you're fast. You want to take a look at it? Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, let me move it out of the sediment. If I can. Oh, uh, maybe that. Uh. No. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Didn't work. And we'll move to do a Niskin so we're not in this big dirt pile. All right, cool. Anything floating on the starboard side? Nope. Okay. Sample salvo, please. Sample salvo. I'm going to bring the tray out Maybe. now. And we'll have to mosey. Echo, so that's the close to the two big ones. Echo, okay, Roger. Oops. Oops punk. All right, can you hold the arm there and come up yep. on the winch? That was one one one. Roger one one one. Yeah, you can stow the arm now. Okay. Can you dive salvo? I guess stow. I mean, by stow, I mean get across and take a Niskin. Huh, I forgot about that. Ah, uh, right here. You can use bubble however yeah. you'd like. Until, oh, man. Oops. Niskin 4 is open. Niskin 4. Mm -hmm. 
Oops, that's the wrong joystick. Uh, is four this orange one? Four is orange, yeah. Ah, sorry. Fine. Got it. Nice. Thanks, guys. That was one one two. Roger, thank you. There are a lot more cobbles to choose from right here. <laughs> These are just so lot. sentimented, though. The reason yeah. I like the other one is because you could see the black part, which is um, what I want. The sediment kind of uh, ruins the, it like contaminates it. Oh, okay. I love um, it. And since I'm doing a top scrape, I like to be able to have the most black I can. So nice piece okay. of cobble. Yep. So, so secure power to the craft? Okay. Oops. So Coralie, if you're doing top scrapes, why do you need such a thick, okay. thick crust? Wait, just give me one second. Oh, sure, I didn't know you weren't, weren't done yet. Okay, we all good? All right, slower now. For sure. How about two zero meters, 0 0.3, does that sound good? 305 is gonna be the new bearing. Bridge nav. Can we get a two zero meter move bearing 305, 0 0.3 knots? Zero point three. Thank you. So uh, the question was, why, if I'm doing only a top scrape, do I need thick crust? Yeah. And um, so there's a couple of reasons. One is that Bob Ballard wants thick crusts in his rock samples. So um, that I did not know. Yeah. I think a lot of people want thick for ferromanganese crust. They want thicker crust because then there's more stuff we can do with them. Mm -hmm. um, there's just more material to work with. So doing the top scrape is um, good, but if you want to learn more about the whole depositional history, it's 